Hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, uh, it is a great honor to, uh, to speak here. Uh, by listening to my accent, you know that I'm actually uh, uh, originally from Hong Kong. Uh, waiting for my BPDA. My friend Helen is taking a picture of me. Yes. <laughs> so um, today, what really what I try to do for you is to bring hope. So um, uh, there's a there's a saying saying that yan mo yan mo hei mong so my ho ho. So uh, I'm I'm just trying to give you hope, right? So uh, I actually um, not a very good student. I'm actually uh, uh, I I'm actually quite old. Uh, uh, my son is 25 years old. My daughter is 20 years old. Uh, they both of them actually uh, study in US uh, for the college, and uh, they used to be a student up right up the hill, so CIS. So uh, and and but I'm I was not a very good student. I actually went to a high school, went to a Band Five school. So if you remember now, it's a band three school in the past. Uh, there's a band five school. It's because of the, it means that the standard deviation is so far away. And I actually, uh, during that time, I was, I actually, so you lao ban. So then you know that how bad I was. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I'm doing okay. So today, what I really want to talk to you about uh, is, I think it's something very interesting to uh, all of you. And they're actually affecting my life. So therefore, I want to, talk to you about technology. I myself is a technologist. Uh, I myself is a technologist. Can you turn up the volume a bit? Yep. Because of, um, I easily get excited. So today I want to leverage the technology Helen and Benny has talked about. By the way, Helen is a MIT, uh, MIT PhD alum, and uh, uh, Benny has actually spent one year uh, during his uh, PhD or master program in, in Cambridge. Uh, MIT. So, and therefore, we are essentially to this session is all about you know uh, talking about MIT. However, however, I just want to focusing on talking about some of the uh, market transition. So, um, so first thing first. So, uh, a lot of people um, uh, uh, probably not know. So, MIT is you know that is a Massachusetts Institute of Technology there, based in Cambridge, Boston, in the east coast of the United States. So, I am responsible for MIT Hong Kong Innovation. We are part of the MIT group. So, it is an experiment that is being conducted. Uh, by MIT to go to a location, trying to help the location while help MIT uh, to develop the Global Classroom Initiative. So therefore, the picture on that side is Boston, that's the Charles River, and uh, actually it's slowing today, so very cold. On the right-hand side is Hong Kong. Now, uh, let, let me give you a context of uh, where, where am I. I am doing my second career. This term, I will come back again. This is my second career. I actually worked 25 years in industry after I finished my PhD at uh, uh, University of What to Do uh, in Canada. And so, therefore, I am the, belongs to so-called the quarter century club. So, uh, I, therefore, I am very old. Uh, and I, of the 25 years of industry experience, I actually worked for Nortel in Canada. I worked for Cisco in... Uh, in U.S. for two years. I actually work in Silicon Valley for two years. Um, and uh, I, 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 I'm seeing uh, Google's is coming up. I'm seeing Facebook coming up. All come from uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, the, the one in San Francisco. Uh, so, and uh, I also work for a VMware company. It's a software company. Um, so if you happen to notice that Benny in his presentation, he talked about, he used one of the charts called the AirWatch, which is from uh, VMware on the IIoT, and also he talked about the turbine. Actually, it's an example from Cisco. So I, I noticed that. So that's, uh, that's why I'm relevant. But so that you know, um, when I was at Cisco from 1989 all the way to uh, 2015, during that time, um, Cisco is the world number one, is the world number one internet uh, equipment provider. Whatever you go, each of the email you send, let's say now, it will go through some Cisco equipment going to the other side. So they essentially make internet the way it is. But during Nortel and, uh, and Cisco, I'm, I am actually working on the wireless uh, mobility area, which I will come back to that. Now, this is uh, not very clear map of the mobile, uh, of the internet. So right in the middle, of course, the world 
is surrounded by United States. So therefore, right there is United States. So you see that the line between the United States of the internet traffic between United States all the way to, uh, to uh, uh, Europe and all the way to Japan, China, Hong Kong is all around this area. Now, internet is still growing. Is still growing after so many years. Last year, the internet traffic grew by 7%. 7%. So now, not only that, of the 7%, the, p the time each of you is spending on the internet, on looking at the mobile phone, is still substantially increasing. We're talking about 30 minutes to an hour more than the year ago. So in other words, that you're using more on the internet. On top of that, uh, let me talk about the five technology that actually underlying what, what is going on now. Number one, you should all the internet users need to know that mobility is actually uh, is very getting more important. That's what my feel. I was uh, I was in the doing the mobile data for uh, for Cisco when I was in US. So uh, the technology itself is actually. Mature, getting mature and moving from, at that time, I started at the 2G, 3G, and 4G. Now it's moving on into 5G. Now, mobility, the smartphone sales itself is, is not going as fast as it used to be, but it's still growing. But more importantly, uh, smartphone, including iPhone, including Android phone, is getting cheaper and cheaper. In other words, the penetration of the mobility is actually going up. That's one thing. Secondly, social. Now, in the past, when people trying to connect with each other, it is hard to connect with each other. In the networking world, we have a formula called N multiplied by N minus 3 divided by 2. The more people end in the network, it actually make the internet much more connected, make it more powerful. So, and therefore, so-so itself is going to be evolved. However, there are the change of the dominant social media is actually keep changing. Recently, uh, Facebook is actually substantially going down. My son no longer, so when my, my son was in a high school student at CIS, he said that, Daddy, I'm, I want to let you know that I use email because of you and mom. <laughs> no longer, do, he said that I don't use email at all. At that time, he moved everything into, uh, into Facebook. That was a few years ago. Now, he is completely off Facebook. He doesn't check Facebook at all. He actually entirely moved it to the Instagram. Uh, move it entirely to, in the past, about a year ago, everyone used Snapchat. Now, no longer people are using Snapchat. Now, people in China not only use WeChat, they also use uh, Douyang, TikTok, right? So, uh, now, you see that the, the change of the social media platform is substantially moving from jumping one to the other very quickly. Third, it's about video. So, Helen talked about the importance of the video. Video is so important. At the time when we are going to school, I remember that if I want to watch Nok Siu Fong, when I was in Hong Kong, I need to be sitting on that uh, TV set, sitting there and wait for that, right? The internet is giving the opportunity for the entire empowerment of the information. So, in other words, that when you are in U.S. Uh, during that time, you can do VOD. Now, I'm sure none of you actually turn on your TV to watch anything on TVB. So last night I was sitting on the sofa at the TVB 10:30. The only thing I watch is is the cooking show by Deng Ye, because I'm a foodie, right? So that's the only reason. But I also have I also have that uh, smart box so that I can actually use it. So. In other words, the control of the information, control of the content is in the hands of the, of the people to watch it. However, recently because of the Instagram and also of the TikTok, uh, Yum, that the control of that video, of the content, is no longer with the big hand of the, of the big people, but also on the people itself. I'm going to predict to you that User-generated short video is going to come over, is going to dominate the, the market. As of today, as of today, 15% of entire internet traffic is for Netflix. So, and this streaming video service is going to come, is going to dominate the entire, uh, it dominate a big part of it. But however, as time go by, you, are going, you, your son, your friend, your girlfriend is going to put their content into the internet. 
and on, on through, the, through the internet. So the, fifth, the fourth technology, which is very important, is cloud computing. I actually work on the cloud computing for the last seven years myself. Why cloud computing is so important? Essentially, cloud computing is giving you an unlimited computational power. I'm talking about unlimited computational power. In the past, what you can do, limited by the, by the phone, limited by the laptop that you're using, in the future, there's no longer, no longer no, no limitation at all. AWS is going to open the data center in Hong Kong. Google's just opened up the data center. Ali has the data center. And, uh, and Microsoft already in Hong Kong for the last three years. So cloud computing is going to substantially giving you a lot of computational power that you've never seen before. Last one is privacy. Privacy is so important, but recently there's a study in Hong Kong saying that 50% of the people in Hong Kong is willing to give up some of the privacy for the usage that they have. Yes, that is the trend. However, a lot of companies like Facebook is facing a big issue on the privacy side. So they don't know how to balance this game. In particular, Europe has a, has a, has a new uh, requirement asking that every time you, you touch on any of the web page, you need to have acknowledge that they receive your information. They receive your personal information. However, in this generation, probably like most of you, uh, like my son and my daughter, they don't mind to give out a lot of, they don't mind to give out a lot of, of uh, some of the privacy issue, PII, PPI data, so that they can actually get the, what they want. I remember, 10 years ago, my son told me that, he said that in the future, Facebook need to pay me in order for me to watch the content, not the other way around. So um, this is a chart uh, uh, from Cisco 12 years ago. That was 2007, 2007. So this chart is talking about, at that time, biochemistry is a quantitative science. So if you know the gene sequence, it's actually a basically a mathematical analysis, right? Now, 12 years ago, this is the chart Cisco put it up, saying that the learning will be like that. Ashley is an MIT student, biochem student. You see that? This is the network of learning she need to use. She can use to leverage her learning. Now, why I can tell you this 12 years ago, because I am sure many of you don't know what is a second life. Second life was introduced 2003. It's getting popular in 2006 and 2007. Telepresence is a Cisco, uh, uh, Cisco product. So that is a 2007. What I'm telling you that this is, although this chart is very old, this method is very old, but it's still, in many ways, is still current. However, in the last few days, uh, Helen and I attend one of the talk. It actually shocked me. Why? Let, let me bring one more point first, OK? So uh, this is John Chambers. He, he used to be the chairman and CEO of Cisco. During that time, he said that there's a way to say that it will change. The internet will change the way we work, we live, we play, and learn. So in other words, that what we are translating is to, I can learn anywhere. I can learn anywhere. However, there's some new trend coming up. Number one, people are using different learning pathway to learn. This is very important. If you are below 25 years old, it is going to affect you for sure. People is going to use different learning pathway to learn. And second thing is the action learning. I'm going to use some example to you uh, about action learning. I was thinking about that uh, about a few days ago, last week. Uh, the MIT provost, Martin Smith, he was in Hong Kong. He gave a speech about MIT, the new direction. And he talked about something called computational something, interdisciplinary subjects, right? And with that, uh, he talked about computation. So I went to the web and tried to look up something related to you guys, because you guys are in the journalism and media. So I found that in Stanford, uh, the, the competing university from MIT, which is a very good school, uh, there's a computational journalism lab. 
and it says that it's using computational method to uncover accountability of story. That would otherwise be untold, right? So, right, using mathematics model, go to the internet to search for the information, right? Recently, because of Donald Trump is the president, therefore people talk about check, effect checking, right? Checking the, ch the fact. Look at this. Now, this one is a research paper just been published uh, as a working paper by MIT. This paper talking about the spread of truth and false of the news week, of the news online. It's actually coming from MIT. So now in here, you, if you read the blue text, it's saying that they're using a differential distribution method to, to check that the true and the false news on the Twitter from 2006 to 2007. They checked about 126,000 and fact checked that and found that, and found that, I'm not going to tell you the result. You need to go look it up. Take a picture. No, there's a very interesting finding. I'm not going to tell you. It's using a computational method to understand of all the Twitter that they have and trying to find the different, using a differential description method to try to verify the answer. Right? Remember, you guys are going to be the journalist communication manager. You need to go do the find, check find. You cannot just rely on one single Twitter to give you all the information that you have. Right? This is a new terminology coming, computational biology, computational economics, computational political science, and computational linguistics. So those are the computational is going to happen. What technology is giving them the power? Social and the cloud, unlimited computational power. And what Benny was talking about, the ability to do analytics, the ability to do big data, analytics. Those are the technology to empower them. Right. So um, recently in, uh, in October, MIT made a new announcement. They say that they create a college of computing. Many of you will say, wow, is it, isn't it too late? This is 2018 when they announced it. The AI was founded in 1955, according to, to, uh, to Helen, right? Why the hell? During that time, MIT is announcing a college of, of computing. Why are we doing it? The reality fact is MIT has a very, good, very big computational uh, department. We call the C-Cell Group under the com uh, electronics, uh, electro uh, electrical engineering and computer science. We have 70 faculty members is in the computer science. We actually have been doing it for a long time. This is a new college. Do you know why? Each year, MIT graduate roughly about 1,000 undergraduate students. 40% of 1,000, they either have a computer science degree or computer science with an interdisciplinary degree, double major. Computer science with architecture, computer science with urban planning, computer science with economics, computer science with biology. For example, economics, there are less and less people taking economics major at MIT. But by the way, MIT have a top economics uh, uh, department in the world. Less and less people taking economics, more and more people taking quantitative economics, computational economics. That's the trend. Just thinking about that. In the field, now it's 40%. We predict that in the future will be 70%. But instead of waiting for students to make the, choose, make, make the, make the choice, they say, Wow, why don't we do that? Why don't we have a college of computing actually insert into all the five schools within MIT so that every student at MIT familiar with computer science and AI before the graduation? Just thinking about that, the power of this action, right? And also thinking about that MIT as the world leading number one, number two, computational school. That is going to change the future. So it is actually a trend setting. Remember, I talk about the uh, different learning pathway, right? In the learning different pathway in the past, that's essentially a lot of people I know. So they are going to school and they're working in the real world. They study for four years and go to work. 
worked for many years, go back to the business school, get an MBA, and maybe later on in their life, they will go take uh, you know, uh, one year off learning about something else and go. This is what we call the learn existing learning pathway. Do you know what is missing? Missing the internet in the middle. So this is the new learning pathway, right? So in other words, that this is in between the two. It should be online. Number one, during your four, used to be four year, now it's become a five year, six year learning. You actually going to company to work, you're actually doing online to work. And after that, during your break time, you are going to get a micro master. If you don't know micro master, it's a smaller master degree. It's a, in Hong Kong, in the MIT version of associate degree for master. So, so, and you will do that a few times. And also on top of that, you are using the bootcamp online education to, uh, to have you to help. In other words, in the future, you are not going to always sit down to learn. You can actually not only go into the real world to learn, you can actually have another option of online to help you to prepare yourself for more fun. Because I have told my son and my daughter for a long time, and I'm showing you now, I have 25 years of industry experience. I'm doing education now, right? I have my second career, right? Professor Lee has a second career. She was, uh, she was a very famous journalist and now become a professor, right? It's a second, entirely second, second career. I'm going to ask you that prepare yourself for the second career and also prepare yourself for the lifelong learning because if you want to be competitive, you need to know how to learn. And your learning is not going to be only going to school. It will be a lot of them is online learning, just like the internet age that we are seeing now. The second part I want to mention is action learning, right? So this is the quote saying that, tell me, I will forget. Show me, and I will remember. Involve me, and I will, I will learn. Benjamin Franklin, the, uh, the inventor, and I think he's also the United States president, right? Yes, that's right. So now, what is an action learning? Action learning means that you pick up a topic you really passionate about that. Don't do something that you have no feeling about that. You have to be very passionate about the topic. And then you are going to have the problem working with your coach, have a teamwork of the people to actually learn together. Now, you said, Charles, that's too, way too theoretical. Let me show you the real example. Memsi. So um, what is MEMC? MEMC is, uh, we just finished the MEMC program in Hong Kong uh, last Saturday. We have the showcase last week. So essentially, it's the MIT Entrepreneurship and Make It Space Integrator. We make 17 MIT students. We, we pick 17 university students from Hong Kong. We put them together in two weeks. And asking them, they know, don't know each other. By the end of it, they need to produce a prototype a company and also the entire business plan. And they need to present it in two weeks from they don't know each other to the other. Let me give you one example, real example. One team came in, want to do smart city on city energy management. Within the building, a lot of energy is being used. That's what they want to work on. They went to go to talk to Sunung Gay properties and all the yada yada. Do you know what they end up doing? Uh, they end up to develop a blanket for, for menopause female. Menopause means So from that into this area. They changed the idea because of they actually work as a team. Now, and this program is actually, we have 23 of them is undergraduate student, 17 as graduate student, female, male, 17 and 17. And actually they come from discipline. Now you will ask, what are the schools that we have? We have Hong Kong U, Chinese U, HKUST, Poly U, Poly, uh, uh, Polytechnic, and uh, China, uh, City University, and Baptist. We don't have you guys. So, and uh, we will do the, the next round is uh, next year. We also ask the student together go to China for two, for, for two days. So we give them experience of China as part of the global classroom. You see that? This is the car manufacturing for Volkswagen. And also, this is the design for a design manufacturing company called PCH. This is where we have all the red color people are students. 
And this is a real team. So this is the winning team. Do you know what have they developed? So look at this team. Three MIT, two MIT, three university from Hong Kong University, one in Hong Kong, two Chinese U. This one is a master, this one is an undergraduate. Do you know what they work on? Asthma, Hao Chun. So because Shara is an asthma user for 17 years, so she needed to have the canister to do the puffing, right? And, but she doesn't like it, she forget it all the time. They develop an IoT solution so that they can actually take the asthma more useful, right? Two weeks, non-stop, they sleep together <laughs> in, in a room. Men, boys and girls separate. Now, I, I talk about that part, right? Now, let me talk about this part. Because of internet, when, when Cisco developed the internet, they have an idea to do the empowerment of the people, right? But they did not know that the empowerment of people means that it is ability to do crowdsourcing. In other words, if you're interested to do something, you can easily go to the web and find other people interested in your area and actually work together as a team. It doesn't matter what geography that you're in. Secondly, we talk about, I can see the world. You don't have to go to grading to experience grading. You can actually do that by increasing exposure. But with that, there are a lot of world challenges that you can work on. Let me give you two real example happened in Hong Kong. So there's a novelist saying that the future is here. It is just not very evenly distributed. It got to, the question is, the internet will make sure that the world is flat. You can leverage yourself and your, your learning in anywhere that you have. How, what, do, what do I mean? Um, this is United Nations. They developed so-called the uh, sustainability development growth. They developed 17 of them. What MIT decided to do is to each year in 2018, which is last year, we define some of the global challenge for the software team around the world to go after that. For example, 2018, work of the future. Now, this is the topic um, Mohammed just talked about, right? And also frontier of health, teacher and uh, educator and coastal community, right? And these are the world problem, big problem. And each of the problem will be defined by the, by the United Nations and the different people around the world. And ask the, team, ask the team around the world to contribute to the solution to one, two, three, four of them. Now, on the 2019, we know that it will be circular supply chain, citizen tech, early childhood education, and health tech. Now, what are these? These are to map in the United Nations goal, right? So using uh, 2018 by the, by the uh, example, that is, uh, we, last year we have 67 solutions from 23 teams. And that actually they provide, they, pro they are target 64% targeting the lower middle income. And 35 of them for profit and 32 of them non-profit. In September, if you are picked, you will go to United Nations in New York City to present your solution. That's one. One more, so, um, th uh, so by the way, in the MIT Solve, we are going to do a solve -a in Hong Kong on March 23rd in Hong Kong, in the, Pro Hong Kong, in, in the note that, that we have. So uh, if you are interested in that, so do let me know. So because of that will be a solve -a If you are being picked, you can actually go to United Nations to present, just like Donald Trump, the way they present, okay? And do a better job. Okay, now, uh, one more. One more. This one at MIT, we said that it's very similar to what um, uh, Mohammed talked in the morning, right? There will be a lot of jobs being replaced, displaced, and there's a new job is being created. How do you prepare for that? Um, at MIT, we have something called the Initiative on the Digital Economy. In particular, we have something called the Inclusive Innovation Challenge. What does it mean? A lot of people get rich. Most of the people still remain poor or getting poor and poor. So, but in the ideal economics, it is, should not be like that. It should be our vision is an economy that works for all. So therefore, MIT come up with one million dollars, one million US dollars, one million US dollars to give it around the world to the best company have that idea to solve this issue. 
So each year they award 1.5 million US dollars. And luckily, and they go five regions around the world. Luckily, this year in Hong Kong will be the Asia Hub, so in our note. So we are going to run a workshop in, uh, in September, trying to recruit company, trying to uh, resolve one of the, the inclusive problem for up to, if they can compete around the world, for $1 million of startup money. No string of checks, just one million. Area that, that uh, they are working on is skill development, income growth, technology access, and financial inclusion. If you're interested, let me know, because of, uh, we don't get to be the regional conference uh, 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 center. These are some of the companies. Now, this one um, is to do AI-enabled market, uh, marketplace for, for all the people who's being hired. For example, this one is doing peer-to-peer -peer knowledge learning. For example, this one doing application without code. For example, this one is an Indian company doing financial inclusion venture. So now you say that why MIT is doing it is because this is in the DNA of MIT. MIT, I, the program I described, and my program, the Hong Kong Innovation Note, is actually one of the 89 programs that we have within the institute to have that. You can see that this is the web page that we have undergraduate student, graduate student, postdoc student, faculty member, and friends and alumni to participate in one of the 89 programs. I just mentioned about three, MEMC, uh, inclu IIC inclusion, I mentioned about uh, uh, soft and my program are one of the 89 programs that we have. Now, last but not least, right, but I want to give you the concluding, concluding thought. Number one, I'm, t I'm telling you, as uh, I have been working in the technology for 25 years, I'm telling you, internet is still uh, is empowering, it's not stopping. So in other words, that proliferation of the internet with the mobile is continuous to go. It will not stop for the next, at least the next five years we're seeing. More people are using it, it becomes more powerful, people will use it for everything. Secondly, secondly, I know that many of you are not technologists, right? But do not worry, right? Just like water, right? Uh, if you know that, if you allow me to say in, uh, in, uh, in Cantonese, at the peak of the technology, the technology disappears. Think about how many technology to make this clean water, right? And that's the peak of the technology. Technology is supposed to be used, not to only study it, right? Just like that many years ago when we learned English, we learned English, the use of English. No one is actually doing English literature. My son is in English literature, but, but he using technology. Every day, everyone in this room is using the use of English, just like that. The use of the technology, computing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning are the key words that you need to learn. But it's not hard at all. If it is too hard, it should not, it's not a good technology. And last but not least, the fundamental of learning has not been changed. You still need to work hard to learn. However, the approach of learning have changed and has substantially changed. I talk about action learning, I talk about different pathway, I talk about online learning. All those learning technology, uh, learning can be learned through the different technology that you can use, including the internet, including mobile, including cloud, including video, including social. And meanwhile, protect your privacy while you have. It is our time, it was our time. It is now actually your time. Thank you very much.